The thrifty gene hypothesis brought forth by geneticist James V. Neal in 1962 attempts to demystify the prevalent yet health-damaging condition of type 2 diabetes among certain modern-day groups. Neal contended that certain genetic factors, dubbed as thrifty genes, could be instrumental in the high incidence of diabetes mellitus type 2, despite its harmful effects. He postulated that throughout evolution, these genes could have been beneficial, allowing the bearer to efficiently accumulate and metabolize food for future scarcity. Such a genetic setup would thus aid survival during famine, especially for child-bearing women in hunter-gatherer societies. In the current times, however, with plentiful food supply, this thrifty genetic predisposition prepares the human body for a famine that seldom occurs, thereby leading to chronic obesity and the related complications, such as diabetes. While the primary focus of this hypothesis lies in explaining the genetic basis for diabetes, it also extends to explaining obesity. Neil was a human genetics professor at the University of Michigan Medical School. In his research paper titled Diabetes Mellitus, a thrifty genotype rendered detrimental by progress, published in 1962, he intended to stimulate further speculation and research into potential evolutionary and genetic factors of diabetes among newly westernized population. He aimed to solve the perplexing contradiction. Despite the severe reproductive and evolutionary detriments posed by diabetes, it is inexplicably common among certain populations, indicating a potential genetic inclination towards it. A vital part of his research endeavored to decipher why diabetes, inducing genes hadn't simply been phased out by natural selection processes. Despite various criticisms and alternate theories, Neil's thrifty gene hypothesis remains a provocative approach to understanding the persistent prevalence of diabetes and obesity. For several years after he first proposed the thrifty genotype theory, Neil continued to examine its validity in various population groups paying particular attention to the rising frequency of diabetes and obesity. He was particularly interested in finding observations that contradicted his theory. However, his continuous research began to sow seeds of doubt regarding the thrifty genotype hypothesis. If the tendency to develop diabetes were an evolutionary advantage, it would have been a deeply rooted disease in those communities currently severely afflicted by it. Yet Neil's investigations revealed no signs of diabetes amongst these populations earlier in the century. Indeed, when he screened the younger generation for glucose intolerance, a potential diabetes precursor, no suggestive symptoms were found. In 1989, Neil published a review of his ongoing research into the thrifty genotype hypothesis, noting in his introduction that the foundational data had largely disintegrated. However, he maintained that the idea of a thrifty genotype still held as much potential as it did when initially suggested expanding his theory. He suggested that the thrifty genotype be viewed in relation to a broader range of associated metabolic diseases. Taking this further in 1998, Neil detailed a more comprehensive version of the original theory. Diseases such as diabetes, obesity, and hypertension, he proposed, were not just the result of thrifty genes that had evolved to withstand intermittent starvation, but stemmed from a wider physiological maladitation this posited that changes in the environment were pushing bodies adapted for a bygone era beyond their bounds thus. Diet changes and exercise to better align with our ancestors' way of life could potentially mitigate these diseases. The thrifty genotype theory has been used to explain the rapid increase in obesity and diabetes among groups newly exposed to Western diets and lifestyles, namely South Pacific Islanders, Sub-Saharan Africans, Southwestern Native Americans, and Inuits. However, the original thrifty gene hypothesis is disputed by some anthropological evidence. Despite the hypothesis being built on the idea that severe famines during humans too, five million year Paleolithic history had selected for efficient genes. Many populations that later exhibited obesity and diabetes showed no signs of previous famine or starvation. This is exemplified by the Pacific Islanders who lived on tropical equatorial islands abundant with year round vegetation and surrounded by fish-rich waters. The theme of this paragraph explores the evolving theories surrounding the causes of type 2 diabetes and obesity with a focus on the thrifty gene theory. This research implies that the intake restrictions brought about by occasional famines and food scarcities during the agricultural period might have led to the selection of economic or thrifty genes. Addressing doubts cast on the thrifty gene hypothesis emerged the thrifty phenotype hypothesis. 
This new theory proposes the genesis of the thrifty traits is not genetic, but instead develops as a result of the uterine environment during fotal growth. This environment has been suggested to play a significant role in predicting a future of food scarcity for the fetus and consequently encouraging the development of insulin resistance. Thus, inadequate fotal and infant growth has been connected to the onset of type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome development. While a significant body of research confirms this evidence, the question of insulin secretion and the respective influences of genetics and environment remain contested. Noteworthy observations have come from metabolic researchers suggesting excellent fat metabolism regulation in most other species that remain lean even with plentiful food supply. In the face of detractors of the thrifty genotype concept, newer theories have been proposed to explain evolutionary roots of obesity and related diseases. The thrifty epigenomic hypothesis combines both thrifty phenotype and genotype theories. It stresses the importance of epigenetic events, with each individual's disease risk primarily being determined by these, rather than traditional genetics. Wada and Yajnik's theory suggests that a change in insulin resistance could lead to phenotypic transitions, including a shift in reproductive strategy and a change in the dependence of muscle strength to brain power. However, this theory is challenged by the timing of the presumed transition and its implications for genetic predisposition to type 2 diabetes and obesity. For instance, the recent decrease in reproductive investment in human societies, denoted as the R2K shift, happened too soon to be attributed to a genetic alteration. A detailed exploration of obesity distribution in mainland USA revealed no link between obesity rates and ambient temperature once factors like race and poverty were considered. A popular counter theory to the commonly cited thrifty genes hypothesis is the drifty genes hypothesis, put forth by British biologist John Speakman. This theory disputes the belief of obesity, offering any selective advantage now or in the past. Rather, the obesity pattern suggests there has not been extended positive selection for obesity. It suggests that obesity might have stemmed from a genetic drift in the genes controlling the maximum fat levels in our bodies. With these changes presumably beginning around 2 million years ago, when early humans reduced their threat from predators, a historic counter to obesity. In a 2007 debate, British nutritionist Andrew Prentice countered this argument, contending that Speakman's critique of the thrifty gene hypothesis disregarded the significant influence of famines on fertility. He proposed that the pressure from recurring famines may have driven the evolution of thrifty genes over the past 15,000 years. Approximating the advent of agriculture, this was sufficient to create a demand for these thrifty genes even within this short span of time. With the onset of molecular genetics, Prentice predicted that the field will be an instrument to test between the adaptive thrifty gene idea and the non-adaptive drifty gene hypothesis. This is because definitive markers of positive selection in the human genome, related to both obesity and type 2 diabetes, would affirm the thrifty gene theory. Two expansive studies tested for such selection markers in genes related to obesity and type 2 diabetes but found no evidence to support the thrifty gene theory or any theory relying on selection during our recent evolutionary past these results suggest, if anything, support for the drifty genes hypothesis. This story delves into the intriguing realm of monogenic obesities, conditions where a single gene mutation has a significant impact on an individual's weight. One example is mutations in the leptin gene. An ongoing mystery is whether such rare gene mutations occur solely due to random mutations, population founder events, and other incidental processes such as drift, or if some selective advantage plays a role in their preservation and proliferation. A recent case revealed a variant of this kind among the Samoan Islanders. This variant is prevalent among the Islanders but is extremely rare or completely absent in other populations. Despite predisposing individuals to obesity, this variant paradoxically offers protection against type 2 diabetes studies, suggests that this variant may guard individuals during periods of famine, and evidence indicates it has been positively selected. The likely explanation is that this rare variant was brought about by a founder effect in the initial small group of island colonizers and spread due to a selective advantage it provided within that group. Therefore, under certain environmental conditions in compact populations, the concept of a thrifty gene could be plausible. The question remains, however, whether the rare variants contributing to the gap in estimated heritability are also thrifty genes or if they're rare anomalies upheld by drift, as implicated for common variants connected to obesity and type 2 diabetes.